Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and I'm sharing this video actually on the Monet Cafe YouTube channel and with my patrons on my Patreon account. There's the link above if you'd like to become a patron for only $5 a month. It's a great fun place where you get a little bit extra and you help to support this channel. Now let's get to the video. Today's lesson is on painting animal eyes and it really is kind of all about the eyes. When you're doing an animal portrait or a pet portrait, it's really important to get the eyes accurate. Here are a few of my pet portraits. I love painting dogs. Um, I do some dog commission work, which is awesome. Oh, that was little Molly. I love her. And even if you don't get as creative with color as I did in my lion painting I'll be showing, the positioning and the anatomy, getting the correct anatomy of the eye is very, very important. All right, time to get started. For this animal portrait, I am using Sennelier Pastel Card, Le Carte Pastel Card. I love the surface. It really lends towards creating soft looking animal fur. And I'd like to thank A.R. Mason in my Patreon group for her lovely submissions to our photo reference album. I loved this line. I actually want to do it again. I loved his face so much. Now I am speeding up the sketching portion to this because the main focus of the video isn't the sketching part. I do have other lessons where I focus more on how to get things correct proportionately. And I wanted to not make this video, what, like three hours long, however long it took me to paint this. So I'm just going to do a little bit of real time to focus on how to paint the eyes. I did end up using a little bit of grid marks just to get those eyes accurate. And uh, then I was ready to get to painting them. Okay, like I said, it's all about the eyes with this. And I've chosen a palette of pastels literally just for the eyes. And I'll take a picture of this so you can see it better. And that may look like a lot of pastels just for the eyes. I mean, if you look at the reference photo, it looks like, okay, we've got gold and black and maybe a little shadowy color and a white highlight. You know, I mean, that's what our, our brain would just logically look at and see. But when you learn a few rules about art, you can embellish it. That's one of the most common questions I get is, how do you change the colors from what you see in the reference photo? And it really is just learning a few simple rules. They're not all that hard. Uh, one of the main ones is just get value right, and then you can get creative with color. Um, so let me break down this eye a little bit while I start to work on it here. I see the eye, when I look at his eye, almost, well, I would say all, not almost, unless the light is shining from a weird angle, but almost always um, the eye, whether it's a human or an animal, has a shadow on the top half because our light source is usually coming from above, somehow above us, even if it's at an angle, and our brow and our lid creates a shadow. So it's almost always a little bit darker in that top half. Um, in his case, the bottom part is lighter, um, up to almost around like nine o'clock or so, or 10 o'clock or so, and um, the top part is shadowed there. So, but what I'm gonna do first is get in my general values and then get creative with color. So let me start painting here. This is like a dark blue here. I know you probably can't see where I'm um, making a mark. As long as we have a dark, dark, um, we're good. And I'm look, I zoomed in on his eye so I could see it. And this expression of the eye is going to be so important. This is too blue. So I'm gonna back up with that. Sometimes you don't know until you just put it down. This is a purple one. I know I'm gonna use this, this is good. Um, I'm probably gonna add something that's even a little blacker, but this will be good to get started. I'm gonna be quiet because I kinda need to focus here. And I know this is a big chunky pastel, but you can find corners to work with. A lot of people I know work with pastel pencils for intricate work like this but I find you can really create more gesture and looseness if you try to learn how to work with the big ones. Now his eye is not perfectly round here. It's got a little bit of a, I'm noticing a little bit of an angle to it.
this is really more of just to get the general anatomy of the eye before I get too detailed with it. And the grids do help. The larger you paint something, the harder it is to get that accuracy. Now, right down there, I'm already seeing where I want to add this blue. The, the black gets a little bit lighter in value. Um, and I'm just, I don't know how my brain works, but I sometimes see other colors. And I know this value is lighter, but it's in the same color family. So I can kind of add the, almost like a, a shimmery, darker value to it. Um, and I'm seeing some interesting purples right down in here, but let me get these blacks a little more. That's just for my note purposes um, to see, uh, reminder to me. Um, anyway, what I was saying is the larger something is, um, the harder it is to render it correctly. And so since this was so large, I knew it was probably a good idea. Well, I knew it when I started um, sketching it in that, man, I want to get this right. So it's not like just doing something little. I'm trying to judge kind of how far does that come down. And of course, you know, we've got layering possibilities with this and um, we can uh, um, cover things up. But I'm trying to work more on um, something that I have called, I don't know if any artist has ever called it this, but it, it works for me, um, is uh, I call it efficiency of stroke. Um, because uh, that's gonna be thinner when it comes down. Um, because I want my strokes to count. I don't want to go, well, you know, I can cover that up later. Um, and uh, so I try to take more time. I hope you guys can see. One of the hard things about filming is angling yourself in a way where you can actually paint <laughs> and you guys can actually see. Now this eye, I notice, it's got almost like a, I'm talking about the round part of the eye, the, the ball of the eye. It's got a, almost like a little corner to the circle. Um, and then it goes up back here, pretty dark. But these things are worth taking the time. It's not something I want to come back and have to correct, even though pastel sanded papers can be forgiving. Um, now that I can see, it was actually part of my drawing, um, was in too far, his eyes a little bit bigger. This is just a kneaded eraser. And if you, if you can get a clean spot, I just got pastel all over it. I just, I don't want to mess this eye up. So I'm just erasing out a little bit of it. I can come in and add more to, to enlarge it, but I'm trying to get it right to begin with. It's almost like this bottom part of the eye is at an angle. That's another important thing to do when you're painting is think about the direction of the object that you're painting and how you can make a stroke that will give that um, indication of that um, direction. A lot of times you do it by how you lay the strokes. And this just comes in, because his eye's a little bigger, and right here and goes up at that little angle right there. Okay, and then we've got a little bit, not as much dark on this eye here as on the other one. Again, he's got a little cast shadow from the light source above that is shadowing the inner part of his eye. Now this is interesting to me because it's like his this angle of his brow comes out a bit and then it it curves back in a little bit like that and um, it get, really gives the indication of that that cat eye feeling you know how they angle up a lot let's see if we got that one in this one this one uh, doesn't angle as up as much but it's going to feel more that way when I get this pupil in because it is more set that way when I get the uh, other colors in on that and um, I love that. I love the way cats have that. Actually, when I was young, now I have old eyes. I don't look that way. I had kind of that cat eye or whatever, especially when I smile. But um, yeah, th things change as you age. <laughs> All right, so I got the blacks in there. Now, at the underneath part of this, of his eye, 
I'm seeing a little of that blue and believe it or not, I'm seeing kind of a magenta color. So I'm gonna get just a, a hint of some of this blue in there. It's a little light up in there. Just gonna... And even though I'm being very specific with this, with the eye, I still want overall the feeling to feel painterly. And um, that's what I'm gonna try to achieve All right now. I can see too, I am gonna have to make this eye inside a little bit bigger. Now, here is that, um, this is like a, let's get this color down here. This is kind of like a magenta, but it might be too light. Let's see, it might not be. I'm just gonna put a little bit of that down there because I just see that. My little doggie's barking out there, Jackson. All right, I got my little Jackson inside. I'm gonna move this up a bit and zoom it in even a bit more so you can see. Hopefully you can see that. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and get in the general values in the inside of the eye so I make sure I get these shapes right and also um, the pupils of the eyes. I may add more colors to it, but this is just to get the general. Now, up above here too, already I can see right above, I might have to actually get in the way here to get in. Unfortunately, my eyes have gotten older and I can't see as good but underneath where that shadow is, I'm actually, it's darker than this. I'm actually seeing a bit of that dark, deep kind of magenta color. So let me see if I can find something like that. This one's probably better. Look at this. That's a little more orangey. That's not even dark enough. It's funny how value changes when you put it up to something. It can be sitting next to something in my box and look relatively dark until I get it up here. Okay, there we go. All right, yeah, I'm seeing a little a little shadowy part. Pardon me if my head is in the way. That's coming kind of up and over his pupil a little bit. And again, I'm just kind of finding a little corner to this. All right, I'm also seeing that this black does come down I put that blue there, but I want to mingle it in and this comes down a little darker. Okay. All right, now let's get in. There's up in this corner here, it's where it's darker and it's kind of a orangey color, but it's also got a little bit of that pink hue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this down first. It's lighter than what I just put down before. And then this is a, like I said, I'm gonna punch this color up a little bit, but I might have to, this might be too punchy. No, I need something a little duller, maybe this one here. And this, I'm squinting my eyes. It's still quite dark next to his pupil, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and get the lights in where I know that they are. And this is where I definitely wanna get this, um, this shape in right. And like I said, I know it came down a little more rounded and a little lower than the black that I had drawn. And uh, I'm gonna actually add some green to the eyes too. Again, this is my, my little color notes. I'm still working on efficiency of stroke, but I wanna get the shape in and this will help me to do that right now. It's like this eye kind of goes behind where the, the bridge of the nose is. So, all right, there's a little bit of that light. Okay, all right, let's get in. I need even darker than that, almost like a dull, let's look at this here. Just a dull orangey color, maybe like this. And it is, because it's darker next to the pupil. And under here, it's actually even a little darker than this, but I'll get the idea in and then I'll work on it. This is where I wanna get some of that green. I'm seeing green along this side and even a little bit of a darker green in there. I had pulled this green, but that's way too light. Let me get a darker green here. Maybe even a uh, a green that's not so bold. 
Lane from MacBook Pro. Thank two. you. Hey Siri. Oh, you're not Siri. <laughs> you're Alexa. Hey Alexa. Hey. Oh, what happened? Somebody said hey. Let me say something. Hey Siri. I am playing audio over a Bluetooth connection to MacBook Pro. I heard two. a man's voice. That's weird. Yes. Who is that? I thought so. Oh, that's my phone. How's my phone talking through that? Let me sit, let me talk to Alexa. Hey Alexa. Do you like to paint? I don't have an opinion on that. Well, well. <laughs> yeah, that one was definitely too bold. I gotta go with this duller green. Oh yeah, that's better. I'll get some of that in there. Sorry, I know my head's probably in the way. Yeah, okay, yeah, the other one was just too bold. Okay, now I'm gonna get some more of a, actually, there's a little bit more of this green kind of coming around here. This is a really big pastel to do this with. And what I'm doing, I'm kind of scumbling these colors together, meaning I'm not totally covering them up. I'm um, letting them kind of blend themselves a little bit. Okay, let's see here. That gets really dark up in that corner of that eye. I'm gonna get a little richer orange, believe it or not. This is a really rich orange. It may be too, no, it might not be too dark. This is a great American pastel that is um, really misshapen because it blew over, my easel blew over, when I was trying to paint on the back porch when our house flooded and we were living in we lived in three temporary places before <laughs> we finally settled in this is a nice darker color I like it I'm having a hard time seeing where it's actually going down because it is so misshapen so let me get under here a little bit see if I can see you got to find a corner with these and then see where you're actually where it's actually hitting all right, I'm gonna go a little lighter than that, coming back around this eye. Maybe this one here. All right, I think I still wanna add a little of that green in there. I'll come back and scumble that in. And it may seem like, wow, that's a lot of work for an eye. <laughs> but I feel like it's worth it. Um, now, I have jumped ahead just a little bit because, unfortunately, in the filming, my eyeglasses, when I had them on, they kept getting in the way, and uh, my, my camera was focusing on my glasses, kind of like they are right now, <laughs> rather than what I'm painting. But I do move back in just a minute, and I wanted to just kind of do a voice over here to describe things. I've got, you know, again, uh, it might seem like a lot of colors in that eye, but a lot of times art, I, this used to fascinate me about art, is when I was, before I was really painting a lot, is how something close up can look a bit more abstract or perhaps too colorful, but then when you walk away, have you ever seen paintings like that when you're just up close and it's like, whoa, it just looks more like um, like patterns and shapes and colors. And then you back up and that beautiful illusion uh, comes to life or into, uh, into a more clearer picture of what the image is as you back away. And so that's kind of like it is with this eye. It seems like there's a, a lot of color and a lot going on if you come up really close to it. But when you back away, uh, all of the values and the colors um, kind of work together. And hopefully, <laughs> they, I felt like they did, so hopefully other people will feel that way too. Um, but I'm doing the same thing now as I'm uh, working on some of the values and colors around the eye. Uh, again, like I said at the beginning, there are tricks that you can learn. I don't like the word tricks. Uh, it's techniques that you can learn that help you to break outside of the 
traditional or local color mindset. Local color just meaning what you see, exactly the color you see in the photograph or whatever your image is. And the technique is to get your value right and your temperature right. Your value is the lightness or the darkness. If you get that right, you can get creative with the color. It doesn't have to be the exact color. As long as the lightness or darkness is the same um, or close to the same, then also if you get the color temperature right, meaning that if it's an area that's in shadow, uh, say the value is like a middle to dark value, but it's in shadow, you typically wouldn't use a warm color of that value because our brains know and the rules of physics is that things or just nature is that things in shadow are typically cooler in temperature so you're telling yourself constantly as you're painting okay what is this value is it dark is it medium is it light and then where is this value is it in shadow is it in sunlight is it in you know an area where oh it, it would be more beneficial to use a warmer color or a cooler color now there are some interesting things i have found that I was fascinated when I first started doing any kind of portrait work. I don't do a lot of portrait work. I love doing animals and I do love doing portraits, but they take a lot of work. As you could see at the beginning, I sped up the sketch part, but the sketch part took uh, not as much as the painting part, but a lot of time, you know, you've got to get these things right. But when I first started doing portraits and studying portraits, uh, portraiture artwork of those that I liked, I noticed wow, some artist actually used green in the face. And I found that it was actually a really neat kind of a shadowy color. So even though green is a little warmer, you would think I was typically using in the shadows of the face purples and blues or, or grays, you know, or whatever. Um, but then when I started seeing how greens could be used uh, to create some interesting color in the face and an interesting, an interesting shadow color, I was uh, tempted to try it myself and so I even in this lion uh, after this eye part I'm gonna speed up the rest of the painting I don't get all of the footage of it but I get a lot of it and uh, watch how I use green in a lot of the areas that if you're first starting art you might have a tendency to just use oranges and browns and uh, deep uh, deep burgundies you know for these lion colors but you can make your painting a lot more alive fun artistic painterly uh, by getting creative with color like that and green is a great uh, color for a face of an animal or a person I'm seeing my face super close up here uh, I'm not really loving that <laughs> but um, again if I do this again I will do it without getting my eye and head in the way of this but I think you can still kind of see uh, kind of what's happening here and how the color is really expressive and uh, outside of the normal colors you would think all right now I've zoomed back a little I could have kept the lion this crazy with color but what happens is these tones or these colors kind of get toned down a little bit as I start layering so you've got a hint of that but it's not quite so crazy you know by the time I'm done you'll see that happening as you see the painting um, come together as I add other things to it. So I, I start out a little bit expressively and then they kind of get toned down a little bit as, as I work. That's usually how I roll. <laughs> but, uh, but I have fun with color. You know, why not? We're artists. I mean, unless you're doing photorealism and you really want it to look exactly like the photo, uh, I think that's the beauty of art is that we can choose to express ourselves through our color choices and, um, and have a little fun. I think that's what makes it fun. All right, so this, I'm going to, I'm actually now going to speed up the rest of the parts of the eye, and then uh, you can uh, take a look at the rest of the painting. And by the way, please subscribe if you haven't to this channel. Um, I love it when you make comments uh, because I love to see what your thoughts are, and I like to respond. Uh, it also does help this YouTube channel if you comment. So on that, let me ask you a question. What do you think about this type of a video? Do you like it when I just take a certain um, aspect and focus on it rather than a whole painting or would you rather just me have shorter you know full painting tutorials you know maybe I, I can't do and, and I've found statistically if I do a two-hour painting not many people are gonna watch the two-hour process so it's kind of good for me to clip it up a little bit um, but uh, but do you like it when I when I um, focus on a feature of painting so I'm constantly asking you guys questions because I like to make this channel better so uh, anyway like 
comment, subscribe, and hang out till the end of the video. That's also a good thing. So even if you fast forward to see the end, that's pretty cool to see it all come together. All right, guys, enjoy this, and um, pretty soon I'll be speeding it up. All right, so now I've got some generalities going in that eye. I'm going to move on to the other eye, and I am going to speed this one up since you saw the first one. And then I'm not going to speed it up a whole lot here, but uh, you'll be able to see uh, a little bit about what's going on with this next eye, and then the rest of the video will be a little bit faster. All right, enjoy. Now again, that seemed like a lot of work just to get started on the eyes, but it really was the focus of, uh, or the, the main emotion of this painting was to draw you right to the, that stare and those eyes. And now I'm using that same, it's kind of, I think it's like the Terry Ludwig uh, brand and the eggplant color that a lot of people love because it's such a nice dark. I love using darks that are not black. Um, I feel like they just have a lot more life, um, even though it appears as black. Again, value and color is kind of relative as to what's around it. So it definitely looks like a black on here, even though it does have a little hint of a, a deep purple tone. Um, so I'm using that same dark to go ahead and get my darks in for the lion in general. I know when I squint and I look, I can see that his mane uh, is dark. And because of the way this photo was taken, and I actually liked it, um, the mane was not uh, real detailed. It was kind of obscure in the background, and I wanted to keep it that way. So I don't give a lot of detail into the mane, and I wanted it to be kind of painterly and loose and fun um, around the perimeter and the edges anyway. So you can see there where I've added some of the green, like I mentioned before, in the shadowy sides of his face. And even though when you see the final painting, you don't see that, it is kind of still underlying. It's still kind of there working together with the other colors and values that I put down. So this is where I, I usually don't spend that much time like I did on the eyes when I paint, unless it's a portrait. Then I definitely uh, want to get the eyes right, and it's worth the extra time to do that. So now from here forward, I tend to do like I normally do, which is work all over the entire painting and uh, working on value, um, still working on making sure I have his bone structure, anatomy, and everything right uh, according to um, a lion and how it would be. And uh, also, I, when I look again at the reference image after you know completing the painting, I see, I think I mentioned at the beginning, where I'd actually like to do this again. I feel like you just get better and better the more that you work on a subject matter 
And the last, well, I, I'm, I didn't include this part at the beginning, but I had said when I was recording that the last time I painted the lion was actually right before our home flooded in 2017. I didn't know our home was going to flood when I started painting a lion, but I literally finished the painting, I think it was the day before, uh, it was Hurricane Irma, and we knew the hurricane was coming, but uh, we had to get out of our house um, when we found out it, the flood was coming. So I literally finished my painting and packed up my art supplies as much as I could anyway <laughs> to get out of there. So, and then I, you know, when I, now it's starting to take shape now a little bit. You can see where the values and the, everything's starting to finally sort of come together. But um, when I started painting this lining, lion, I happened to think about that and, and realized how much I love painting lions. And I realized I'd like to do more. So I'd like to do it again, even from the same reference photo. So, all right, patrons, if you guys would like to follow along with this, you know you can share it in our Patreon group and Monet Cafe YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed that. And of course, as always, happy painting to everyone. Thank you.